day it is today and we're here with Rach. Hey Claire, so good to be with you this morning everyone. <laughs> yeah, um, look we're just so glad to be hosting you today yeah. and we just really hope and pray that this morning God just really um, speaks to you through through the message and through the praise and worship and Rach and I are going to have a bit of a chat later yeah. about a few things and we're really um, glad to have you along the journey this morning with us. So great. This morning's going to be so good, Claire. Yeah. I'm so excited. So we're going to just get stuck in right now to some praise. We've got a song called Freedom, which is a really powerful song. If you're feeling locked up and, and shut away inside or you're just feeling lonely, then this song um, is really powerful because you can just sing it and know that in God we have freedom. Yeah. So let's get into it.
classic was that song. The lyrics in that song are really powerful and that's definitely one of the songs that I have in my playlist throughout the week. It just encourages my spirit. So if you don't know what to listen to, grab that song um, and just replay it over and over. Um, right now, I'm going to hand over to Rach because we're going to have a bit of a chat about um, the topic of kids. Yeah. And Rachel's been a teacher now for how many years, Rach? Three years? Three years, And yeah. Rachel's also been um, in kids ministry as a kids leader, um, which, you know, she's had experience in that. So I just want to hand it over and um, hear a bit about her heart for kids. Go for it. Awesome. Thanks, Claire. Good morning, and I am Rach. For those of you who don't know me, I have been teaching now for not a very long amount of time, only three years. But as you know, Claire, as a parent, three years with kids long three years. is a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've, I've, um, I've always had a heart for kids. I think God has really given me um, a real passion for teaching the next generation about Him. And mm. that really comes from, um, I think, my own personal journey and my own personal um, love for God and, and, and my early years. Um, both my parents were pastors growing up, and as yours were, Claire. Yeah. And, um, so I was really fortunate that I had a really great upbringing with parents who really saw the value in in bringing me to church, in you know, in getting me to help collect, you know, tithes and offerings, and mm. and really um, getting me involved at an early age, which I am so grateful for. And I think from there, I started as a teen, um, <laughs> serving in kids ministry and youth ministry, and really loving yeah. that. And that really um, sort of went towards my teaching as far as I started in early childhood and thought, mm, little one's probably not the best for me. <laughs> so I went for, um, for primary teaching and um, this is my third year out and I really love, um, you know, I really love that opportunity to encourage and equip the next generation. And a quick story for me before I hand back to yeah, you. Yeah, like <laughs> One of my most memorable um memorable moments as a teacher was I have a year four class um, two years ago and it was Easter time and this class may I say was just that class you all know you know you probably those of you who've had kids or you've been in school you know there's always that one year and they're just difficult crabby <laughs> like they're just they're not the best they're not the best behaved they're not the most academic but they were the funniest bunch of kids I've ever yes. taught and so it was Easter, and this ki these kids, they were so, they were just rotten this day. And <laughs> our school had this beautiful prayer walk that some teachers had made and really um, spent some time creating this most beautiful room, you know, dark lights, twinkle lights, and they had done the Stations of the Cross. And I remember just being like, God, what am I going to do with these kids? And, and I just felt this, like, take them into this prayer room. So I said to them, okay, well... Yeah. Let's go and let's actually um, let's go and see um, what what God's you know what God's going to speak to us about. We're going to go in, and I don't want you to speak to anybody, but I just want you to go in. And on each station, there was different things, you know, write a prayer, do this, and all those things. And I just remember walking in that room, and you get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. You can just feel the presence of God is in there. And I remember kids coming in this beautiful room, and they all were like angels in this room and I was like where is this room I need, it. I need it every day but amazing how the presence of God really changed some of those kids I had kids in tears I had kids you know praying for the first time and I just I just love how the presence of God can really change a young person's life yeah. it can really take someone who's broken a child who's got you know, very little in the world and it can really give them hope and encouragement. And so yeah. for me as a teacher, that's what I hope to bring to, to young people is just um, just cool. showing them that there is a way, there is a hope, there is a truth that is in Jesus. But um, that's me. What about you, Claire, as a mum? Yeah, well, I'm just going to share a bit about um, motherhood. And uh, becoming a mum has really taught me so much in ways that I never expected. Um, even after 32 years of living, mm. there's things that I've learned from my kids, um, even at the young age of five and seven, mm. um, that remind me that I don't know it all and <laughs> I don't know everything about myself and they challenge me and believe they've made me a better person uh, and a better mum. <laughs> and Motherhood's taught me so much about grace. Yeah. It's taught me lessons of love and not just me loving them, but 
through loving them how much God the Father loves me yeah. um, and also lessons on priorities what really is important in life and the biggest one of all the biggest lesson I've learned probably is that I really can't parent well without God being the source of energy yeah. that I need to draw from on those, on those days where I feel like I literally have nothing left to give um, as much as I love my kids it can be really exhausting they, they do command and demand a lot yeah. from you at times um, and with everything that you juggle as a mum I really need to go back to drawing from yeah. God as my source um, of, of energy in the sense of like um, helping keep me going in, 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 in his strength so but kids kids I believe are definitely to be seen and heard in the old <laughs> yeah. days it was no kids are not to be heard they are to be quiet and they are to be contained and I really believe that they have a voice they have a voice mm -hmm. and have so much to offer us if we actually slow down and we actually learn to listen to them yeah God places such incredible value on kids even in the in the Bible it talks about God Jesus um, saying little, little ones come to me that the kingdom of God belongs to them and we need to adopt that value that he has and, and place it on children um, whether you have kids or not that's regardless if, if you've got um, connections with children or you know a mum or you know parents who are struggling it can be a support and encouragement to them um, but I really believe that we should never as adults and this is something God sort of showed me is we should never place a limitation or put, place a, a cap on what how God can use children yeah. even at a young age because um, there's so much potential and this childlike faith that kids have um, we can really learn from that and adopt that in, in our walk with God and as time as adults more than ever in this crazy COVID pandemic um, world we're living in we really need to um, just like I said again, like adopt this childlike faith, not a childish faith where that lacks wisdom, but a faith that really relies on God and depends on God. Mm -hmm. Just like a child or a little baby would rely or depend on their mum and dad for day to day living, we need to be like that with God. And our, our kids are just so precious. They're our future, um, definitely not to be overlooked. And the seeds we sow, and like Rachel is a teacher, the seeds that she's sowing into these little, little children's lives, um, that's setting them up for a future. That's um, investing in helping to shape who they are going to be in the future and, um, and all that God's called them to be. Yeah. And I think it's just a really powerful thing that we, we not kind of shove the kids in the corner, but we see and place value on them like God would and... Um, really kind of harness harness and, and help them to to realize the value that god has for their lives so yeah. sort of a bit of what i wanted to share about motherhood and kids and yeah so good. i love yeah. that i love that childlike faith that you know mm -hmm. there's no junior holy spirit that god wants our kids as much as he wants us and i'm just going to pray for our kids this morning yeah, awesome. uh, if if you've got kids we are uh, so supportive of you we love you and i'm going to pray right now father god i thank you for the children lord i thank you that they give us such an example of childlike faith father i pray for each and every child lord that you would speak to them god that as you speak to you know the adults god that there is no junior holy spirit God, I pray that you would come and you would be tangible in these young people's lives, Father. I just thank you for the parents and the families, the champions of these kids, God, that you would equip them, that you would release them, that you would encourage them to do the amazing job that they're already doing, Father. We thank you for our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. That's great, Rach. So we're just going to jump straight into some worship now. Yeah. Um, a really beautiful song, Peace Be Still. Um, Feel free to sing wherever you are, lift your voice and just allow the Spirit of God to move and he can, just as Rach has, has spoken about the kids in that prayer room, anywhere, anytime, any place, God can meet you where you're at and this song is just beautiful so just allow it to get into your spirit. Yeah. Thanks guys.
face the way I don't wanna be afraid I don't wanna be afraid I don't wanna fear the storm just because I hear it roar I don't wanna fear the storm I don't wanna fear the storm Thank you.
So good to worship together, hey Claire? Yeah, it's awesome. It's so good, I love it. Hey, we are um, having all of our Connect Group information and anything that you might need to know, you will find on our PB Family Facebook page as well as our People Builders Facebook page. So make sure that you stay connected in this yep. time and get online and see what your Connect Group is up to this week. We've also got the opportunity for you to um, come along to one of our PB at home in homes, yeah. which has been really great over the last few weeks. Awesome. And uh, we're so excited that we've actually got two more houses next week so that everyone has the opportunity to come along and get connected so and, and join in, in church at home together. Um, I'm really loving it. It's so good to see people after yeah. all this time. Yeah. So make sure that you click the link that is posted after church this morning to get yourself along to one of those groups. It's going to be great. And we'll have COVID safe practices. So if you're sitting there going, oh, I don't know about that, it's, it's all good. You can have peace. Um, that is, yeah, snacks. we're going to have safe gathering yeah. in homes. It's going to be awesome. And right now we have the opportunity also to, to give to PB or People Builders, if you're not sure what PB stands for. Um, God's doing something amazing right now through this time and um, by giving in to, to People Builders, it's, it's, God wants to do so much in our community and we really um, appreciate and value um, the, 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 the tithes and offerings that come in. So to do that, all you need to do is click a little link up the top which brings down a drop box and you can give that way um, or jump on the website and it has all the directions there. So um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited for this morning's word. We've got the awesome, yeah. the amazing Pastor Jeff. He's got something special to bring for you this morning. So why yeah. don't you lean in and hear what God's going to share with us this morning. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome. Well, so good being together again today. I'm just going to put this coffee down because I want to get into the Word of God together. And it's going to be a great time in the Word just for a few minutes this morning. My name's Jeff, and if you haven't been a part of PB Church at home before, then I welcome you. And I hope you can really glean something from this time together in God's Word this morning. I want to go straight to Mark chapter 4 because in Mark chapter 4, Jesus speaks these three words, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. And they come from uh, the title, it's the song title of the song that we sang together just a, just a few moments ago. And uh, both the song and this passage I want to look at this morning because God's got something really powerful for us to understand as we look at these verses. So Mark chapter 4, verse 36. Let's get in there together right now. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Wow, what an incredible moment in the disciples' lives to see Jesus standing in that boat and speaking to the sea. And it just completely goes calm in a moment. Just an incredible miracle that Jesus performed right there in front of their eyes. And, and of course, we see also in this passage that these disciples were fearful. They were fearful perhaps of the sea crashing into their boat and the, the imminent danger that they were in, but also fearful in a sense of the awe, uh, the awestruck nature of seeing God uh, activated through Jesus all over this sea that they were so familiar with. And uh, all of a sudden it was calm. And, you know, this is Mark chapter 4. This is the very early days. These disciples were just getting to see the incredible nature of who Jesus really was. And, uh, and so this passage unfolds to them the uh, omnipotence and power that was in Jesus' life. So let's have a look. This song that we've sung, Peace Be Still, Peace Be Still, it's actually the words of Jesus. And so Jesus speaks those words, but also in the song, we not only have Jesus' words, but we have Peter's words. And some of Peter's words put into the lyrics of the song are this one that says, Say the word and I will set my feet upon the sea till I'm dancing in the deep. And uh, those lines are actually a declaration 
of faith by Peter, not from Mark chapter 4, but from a number of chapters further on where Peter remembers chapter 4 of Mark, where Peter Jesus had calmed the sea. And uh, we see in, uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 14, Peter stepping out on the water and walking on the water. And uh, it's just an incredible miracle. And uh, the reason he did that, because Jesus is out on the water already, walking on that water in another storm. And uh, Peter sees him and uh, Jesus says, come. And Peter steps out by faith. He steps out of the boat, walks on the water, and an incredible miracle takes place. Not just Jesus walking on the water, but Peter walking on the water as well. Incredible miracle. You know, who knows that walking on water is a miracle? Jesus did it and Peter did it. And I reckon if there was a crocodile in, uh, in the local river here, I'd be walking on water as well. I'd just be out of there really fast. And uh, I'd be crying out to Jesus, come on, let's do that miracle again. And I reckon you probably would as well. And uh, so it's just incredible what Jesus can do. But in this case, it's a real genuine miracle as Peter walked on the water. It's made it into the word of God and it's been with us for thousands of years now. And we've been reading about it. And it's an incredible miracle that inspires me to step out, to step out by faith. You know, part of the New Testament uh, and part of what the church has is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's a number of gifts given to us, a healing, prophecy, speaking in tongues, words of knowledge and wisdom. And one of the, the miracles, is, uh, one, of the, the, well, one of the gifts is miracles. And miracles are a gift of the Holy Spirit. And th- that gift can be activated in our lives and released in our lives. And, you know, I'm praying for God to release the gift of miracles in our church and in your life and in my life and that we can see God at work in miraculous ways, doing things that just could not be done in the natural but can happen in the supernatural, just as miraculous as walking on water, that God can do a miracle again in your life and in my life and in our church and in our city and right across the earth, in fact. You know, one of the things that can short-circuit miracles in our lives is fear. And one of the things that can make short work of fear is miracles. So fear can short circuit miracles, but miracles can make short work of fear. And I want to encourage you today that God's going to deal with fear right now. Lord, you're going to take something of these words this morning. You're going to deal with the fear that can come and attack us. You know, and if we face impossible situations and and adverse winds and rough seas and they threaten to take us out, then uh, fear can get in in the area of health and finances, relationships, even this global pandemic is getting to, uh, getting to us in the sense that it's putting a lot of fear in people, focusing on the, the fear of what this thing's doing to our economy, to people's lives, to our medical and health system here in Australia, and of course to families and for those that have lost loved ones, it's been an incredible impact on them. But today we've been singing three words, three words from Jesus that can dispel the winds of fear and release a miracle. And here's the three words, peace, be still, peace, be still. You know, like the disciples in the boat, I think we've all been overcome by fear, at least at some stage in our life. And we've all pulled back from being bold or even uh, battled with anxiety and even collapsed under anxiety because of fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown, fear of dying, fear of losing friends, fear of being rejected or fear of being uh, poked fun at if we act a certain way, fear of being persecuted, uh, fear of being persecuted for righteousness sake, for our faith, for standing up for what's right. You know, fear can get a grip on us. But Jesus speaks not just to the waves, but he speaks to the fear in the disciples and he says, peace, be still. You know, that's the song we've sung today. And it begins by expressing a desire to not be overcome with fear when facing the roar of the waves of life, that some of these waves just keep rolling towards us, rolling towards us. And and this song begins to declare, I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want, who wants to be fearful? None of us really do. Who wants the crippling effect of being overcome by fear? I don't want to fear the storm. Do you want to fear the storm? And yet sometimes we find ourselves in fear. Verse 2 goes on even more. It declares something greater, declares uh, the determination of an overcomer. Uh, Not just, I don't want to fear the storm, but I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to fear the storm. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to fear the storm because in Christ we are overcomers. We can choose to declare by faith, I'm not going to fear this storm. 
I'm an overcomer in Christ. I can move through it. We're going to come through, you know. And then in the song, the chorus declares Jesus' words, peace be still. And it goes on and says, even when my eyes can't see, I will trust the voice that speaks. Even when my eyes can't see, that's the, the, the voice of faith. Faith doesn't require us to be able to see it all. We just step out in faith. We trust the voice that speaks, just as Peter trusted the voice of Jesus. To, when he said, come, he stepped out and uh, he trusted. And so we saw that great miracle come to pass as Peter trusted God's voice, Jesus' voice, stepped out in the water and saw the miracle. You know, it's a decision of faith. Faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. Hear Jesus' words today and trust his voice. Even when we can't see how it's going to work out, we can trust him. Listen for his voice and step out. You know, the song continues into the bridge with a declaration of faith that's reinforced by three lines that are repeated four times over. And here's the three lines. Let faith rise up, O heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. You know, let faith rise up, O heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Let me sing it again. Let faith rise up, O heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Now, this is a powerful, powerful song. It's a declaration of truth. It's a declaration of life. It's a direct de declaration of faith from fearfulness of stormy seas to declaring a desire to not be fearful to a step of faith and then the miracle of walking on water. You know, we need to repeat things sometimes to get them into our spirit so that our words speak faith. They speak back to our own soul. We hear them and, uh, and we rise up in faith. We rise up in faith. Our heart begins to believe and faith rises up within us. And in this song, we sang that four times over and then later in the song, you sing it four times over again. And so eight times we declare those three lines. And I believe it's an incredibly powerful, powerful truth for us to get a hold of today because if we want to see fear dispelled we've got to be willing to hear the voice of Jesus as he says come and step out of the boat of safety step out of the boat of what's familiar step out of the boat of the uh, the thoughts and emotions and feelings and circumstances that we're so used to and begin in a new journey of faith and he's there right there saying come and he's going to hold on to us he's going to look after us let's have a look Matthew 14 Jesus uh, is right there with Peter, and Peter uh, steps out of the boat right here. Matthew 14, let's have a look at it. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and he caught him and he said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, this is the declaring moment in Peter's life. It's, uh, it's a moment where something incredibly miraculous happened for the whole world to hear about. And we're hearing about it today. A step of faith. A bold step of faith. You know, when we step out in faith, God's not setting us up to fail. In fact, it's the opposite. Jesus is right next to us. He's right there, even in the midst of our doubt. He lifts us up and he sees us through and he's not going to let you drown. He's not going to let you fall. And I commend Peter for stepping out in faith. Even though he, a little bit of fear began to grip, Jesus' hand was there to pick him up. And I want to encourage you, even if a little bit of fear is lurking around, step out in faith anyway, because Jesus is right there with you and he's going to see you through. He's going to uh, bring you right through. He's not going to let you drown. And so in this song here and in this passage this morning, the outcome of facing the storm, of trusting Jesus' words and then stepping out of faith is seen here in the disciples here in Matthew 14 with the revelation that they received that they say right there as Jesus and Peter step back in the, into the boat, they say, truly you are the Son of God. Truly you are the Son of God. And that's the revelation that He is the Christ, that Jesus is the Savior, that He is the Son of God, that He's the one. And we believe in him. 
faith rises up, our heart believes, and uh, something changes on the inside of us as we declare, let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up in you. Let faith rise up in us as a church, in us as a body, as the body of Christ, as believers, as we travel in the boat together across the sea and the storm comes up, but we're not going to stay there. We're not stuck in the storm. We're not going to go down in the storm. We're going to the other side and Jesus is with us all the way. Amen. Such a beautiful, incredible passage. Today, it's a message about faith. Jesus is speaking peace and stillness, that fear will be exposed and be dispelled as you step out and move forward into all that God's got for you in the days ahead. If you're here this morning and you've never invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Saviour, I'd encourage you to make that decision, take that step. It's the best step you're ever going to make. It's the first step of faith that we make with the Lord, inviting Him to be uh, part of our lives and we follow him. You can pray a simple prayer like, like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn to you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Wash me clean. Make me whole. Set my feet on a new path. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it's been great being with you this morning. And I uh, look forward to incredible days ahead. Go for it. In Jesus' name. Thanks, Pastor Jeff, for that great word. Such a encouragement to me and I know it's an encouragement to you. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning. It's great to have you with us. Wherever you are, we hope you've been blessed this morning. And just before we go, Pastor Jeff's about to jump on with a very exciting announcement. So stay tuned and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hello, church family. I'm excited to be able to share a special announcement with you today. And just before I do, I've been reflecting on what God's been doing uh, in our church over the last four or five months. And I remember sharing with you about God taking us into uncharted waters, entering into a new frontier, that we're entering into a new era as a church. And I believe that's proving to be true and there's more and more yet to come. But uh, uh, God's been doing some amazing things. And of course, just two weeks after that, COVID-19 lockdowns came into being and the church home that we've known for the last four years, uh, the Glass House, locked down and we've been unable to meet there for all those months. And uh, so we've been praying and thinking and considering right throughout the year, what is the future for People Builders Church as far as our facility, as far as our church home? And uh, way back in February, we actually began to look at different facilities that would allow us to have a 24-7 home. And uh, we looked at different places right around our city and uh, two places became very apparent to us. One of them we have stepped into already and that's at 124 Horton Street and uh, we have our Community Connect, our Community Care Arm is going to be facilitated out of that building. We've just about finished all the setup there now and we'll be sign writing the window and getting going there and that. so that's exciting. Karen and I and the team have always had a heart to see a place in the centre of our city, a place to connect where people can connect right in the heart of our city and there we are right in the main street. So we're very excited about the future for our 124 Horton Street facility and we'll be moving forward with that, that's exciting. But we also had looked at other places and one of the places we looked at in February was in Acacia Road, One, uh, sorry not 140, number 40 Acacia Road, Acacia Avenue, sorry, Acacia Avenue over in the industrial area. And the exciting announcement today is that uh, way back in February we were unable to step into that and of course the lockdowns came down but today that building's come back up, things have begun to change, we've had lots of talks, lots of discussions, lots of prayer and here we are in a brand new situation where number 40 Acacia Avenue is going to be our new church home 24-7 in a, just a few weeks time and uh, we've already stepped into the building and we're beginning now to look at doing the fit out there and it's going to be very, very exciting. And it's a, it's a great big building just off the bottom of uh, Acacia Road, comes in off Lake Road and it's three stories high. And uh, we'll be able to have children's ministry and uh, some of our admin upstairs. In the middle level will be the church auditorium, which will be very exciting, and the bathrooms and so on. And then downstairs will be a youth space, a cafe and a chill out zone. And uh, we're very excited about what God's going to do out of that great, great new space and uh, he's got some great things in store. You know, it's truly a unique building and a, an incredible opportunity for us to step into. And uh, what makes this 
A reality is a decision that our eldership and our leaders have made to embrace an opportunity to partner with another church, another great church in our town, and that's Coastside Church. And Karen and I have always had a heart for unity and for the bigger picture and to see our city come to know Jesus. And so together we will be co-sharing the whole of this facility with Coastside Church. And on Sundays, we will run our church services in the mornings. This is how it's gonna work. We're gonna run People Builders Church services in the mornings and Coastside will run their service in the evenings as they've been doing up until COVID hit. And we will share a mixture of the different days throughout the week for all of our programs and our gatherings. And so we're gonna make full use of this fantastic facility for the next few years together. It's gonna to be amazing. I want you to be excited. We're excited what God's gonna do. He's doing something different. It's a new era. It is uncharted waters. Neither Mark and Sheree Minturn from Coastside or Karen and I here have uh, shared or co-shared a building like this before. We've certainly shared with the Glass House and we've shared with Panthers, but now we're going to be uh, leasing this big building, sharing it together with Coastside and getting on with the work that God's called us all to do and that's reach people with the love of Christ right across our city. I'm excited to uh, go down this track and to see what God's gonna do. It's gonna be fantastic. And uh, you know, right now we're gonna have uh, a fit out's gonna begin and we're gonna have opportunity for you to be involved, to connect into one of the teams, put the carpet down and build some things and get the stage built and different aspects of the fit out. And we've got a lot of things to be doing, so we'd really love you to get involved. If you've got some spare time on the weekends or in the evenings or whenever you can help out, come and see us and we'll get you into one of the teams and you can be a part of getting that building ready to go. How exciting is this? It's just so, so exciting. And uh, we're gonna have a fit out, there'll be video screens there, we'll have a new stage build, get the cafe ready. So much going to happen. More and more in 2020, more and more, more and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. And we're in prayer together with the Coastside guys that God's gonna bless this and it's gonna be an incredible season for both Coastside and for us at People Builders as we take over 40 Acacia Avenue. This coming Tuesday, I'd like to invite you, Karen and I would like to invite you to join us along with Pastor Mark and Cherie Minturn and the folk from Coastside. We're gonna have a walk through the building at 5 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon and then at 6 p.m. we're just gonna have a half an hour or so of prayer, all gather together and pray. Believe God to breathe on this new venture, this new adventure together and see something begin that we've never seen before in this town and I'm excited for what God's gonna do. So, this is the big announcement. 40 Acacia Avenue will be our new venue for church, probably around the middle of August. As soon as the fit out's done, we're gonna be moving in there and starting church in Acacia Avenue, Port Macquarie. What an exciting time. What a really exciting time. And I can't wait to see you all on Tuesday. So join with us and we're gonna have a great time praying together. Okay, speak to you soon.